Tabor, here we go. The Taxpayer <laughs> Bill of Rights, Tabor. Constitutional limit on how much the state can keep and spend in the part of the law that requires a vote of the people for any tax increase. So let's get the simple question out of the way. Mr. Sias, if you had your choice, without Tabor's requirements, should Coloradans always have a vote on tax increases? Yes, they should. Okay. And on the refunds. Mr. Young, should tax increases always be put to a vote regardless of Tabor? Yes. Okay. Now let's get into the weeds. Mr. Young, your first year as treasurer in 2019, you encouraged voters to pass Proposition CC to let the state keep all future Tabor refunds, including the ones we just partially got. Voters rejected that. This year, in response to the Tabor refunds getting sent to us earlier than normal, you have repeatedly said, quote, this is a crucial time for us to get tax refunds back to taxpayers. Besides being politically advantageous in an election year, what got you to be pro Tabor in three years? Well, we know that the prices are going up, and so we wanted to be sure that people had that money in their pockets so that they could actually, and, and for people in moderate to low income um, uh, family situations, you know, they're struggling with rent, they're struggling with food, medicine, transportation, and the like. So, you know, we knew that it was important to get pe uh, this back to people. I will remind you that CC was exactly what I just said. We put it in front of the voters and, and they decided uh, that they didn't want to uh, support that. However, I will remind you it was for education funding and for transportation funding. And so I always talk about the outcomes of Tabor. And we've been uh, watching Tabor now for 30 years. We have the lowest competitive salaries for teachers. You can't spend any time on the roads without seeing what the problems are. And I point back to Tabor as the problem that's causing that. But if that's your position, shouldn't you be saying, I don't want to be giving you this $750, $1,500 check. I don't want to be giving it back to you. No, not in a situation where we know the economy has turned. I think we should always look at the situations and make sure that we are addressing people's needs. But certainly education is a need. Transportation is a need. I have a sister who's intellectually and developmentally disabled who was homeless for a year. And this I uh, really attribute to directly to uh, Tabor. We've got people who are vulnerable and at risk, and we can't meet life-saving kinds of supports for them as a result of Tabor. Thank you, Mr. Young. Mr. Sias, if you had your choice uh, with Tabor, with the refunds, would you like to see them continue to be equitably distributed like they were this year, regardless of your income level, or do you want them to still increase as your income level increases? My, my preference is that they reflect the taxes that people pay, but I frankly don't have much of an objection to the way they were distributed. My objection to this is, first of all, that my opponent is running ads trying to get people to vote for him on the basis of giving them money that, in fact, they were A, going to get anyway, and B, that he tried to prevent from ever happening. I also have a very different view about the government's about how the government should be able to reach into our family budgets and take money without our permission. I think getting that permission is important, and I do have a follow-up on his comment regarding education funding. And just real quickly, if Tabor sure. refunds continue to exist, should they be sent out early like they were this year? I have no problem with them being, being sent out early. Okay.